Hey, this is Mike Sinise. I'm hanging out with Massimo Bonzi, co-founder of Arduino. Massimo, it's been a very interesting last couple months for you guys. Tell me, what's the latest? What's happening with, with Arduino right now? Yeah, so, well, obviously everybody, I guess, in the maker movement knows a little bit about the situation we're going through right now. We have some, you know, legal issues related to the, uh, the name, mostly, you know, we have some disagreement with our former manufacturer, but you know I don't want to go into details with that because that's just the legal stuff. And actually, I'm a maker. I'm much more interested in about the making. And I think you know what 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 is the, the biggest questions that I got from makers in the last few weeks is you know where and when can we get Arduino CC products? And now we were we we're done it. We we have it. <laughs> so. We have actually signed a great partnership agreement with Adafruit, who's going to be manufacturing uh, Arduino products in New York, in Manhattan. And I think it's particularly important this because we were there at the beginning of the, of the maker movement. You know, we were part of the community, that the original community, and we believe in the same genuine ideals of you know open source hardware, working with the community. So it was, it was a natural partnership. We obviously have other partners like SparkFun and other people we work with, but this is a big you know, step for actually volume manufacturing of Arduinos in the US for the US market. I think that's the biggest news. So from the beginning of July onwards, they will be available to purchase in the US. So all the people who want to support, you know, what we call the real Arduino can do that. Uh, and, you know, we call it Independence Day. Well, that's fantastic. I know that um, it's it's a big step because, well, first of all, the, with, with, with all the recent challenges, getting that part sorted out and solved now you've you're, you've you're able to get back into a manufacturing element uh, but also just in the overall arduino story to to create a new york or american based manufacturing setup that's also a, a big step so um were, were there any major challenges that you guys had to overcome besides obviously the, the obvious ones um for putting things together with adafruit well you know it was very easy in a way because our hearts are in the same place we always you know believed in the same idea so that was easy <laughs> then obviously when you're trying to implement such a big change on one hand you really need to design the capacity because the volume is high a lot of people want to buy Arduino products in the US so we had to design that and Adafruit has been amazing and really like working with us on that and also I guess on the other hand, it, it, in a way, yeah, it's mostly, you know, the challenge of setting up the logistics and everything else so that it happens correctly. And also there's a little bit of, little bit, maybe a lot of work that goes with uh, talking to lawyers and making sure that everything you do is done properly. Because, you know, one of the things that I think it's important that I want to reflect on is the fact that what's happening to us right now is actually a key moment in the history of the maker movement. I think in a way, the maker movement, the open source hardware movement is kind of losing their innocence in a way a little bit. You know, I really want to fight this because I don't want like a young woman tomorrow trying to start her own open hardware company, having to spend 90% of her time to get with lawyers to get everything set, set, set up before she can go out and get something manufactured. I don't want to live in a world like that. I want makers to be able to go and, you know, we are open source, Every, we give away everything. So the only thing we need to protect is our name. But we don't want to be in a place where somebody young that wants to start something is to spend most of her time on lawyers and then a little bit of time, you know, working on the ideas, the manufacturing. We don't want to be like that. We, we need to really look into this and as a community respond. So product wise, the, um, the, the Adafruit partnership, are they going to manufacture everything that you guys are producing, all the boards that you guys have? So Adafruit is uh, starting to manufacture what are the core products. The, the classic Arduino products that have people request more often. And we are also going to, uh, we're gonna announce a number of other partnerships in the coming weeks in order to be able to cover the whole world. So we're working on partners in the different geographies. You know, there was an immense response from a lot of people, friends, 
people that were not friends before. We, we didn't know them, but they approached us. They really wanted to work with us. So we're going to be announcing really a global strategy to cover all the different geographical areas and all the different product lines. There's obviously a lot of uh, importance for us is this transition to the 32-bit uh, uh, architecture to enable makers to really take advantage of that architecture and the connectivity. So we have a number of products that are going to be ready again towards the end of June, like this new Wi-Fi shield that we announced at Maker Faire and um, you know this uh, new Ardu the new Arduino Zero with all the debugging on board and you know so there's a lot of that new products, new directions. So we're going to be working with a number of partners. What else? Well, two very important things for me. First of all, you know, we really worked to make sure that we can provide the products that we make to the whole world. So, you know, we went through a lot of discussions and analysis and scenarios with, you know, lawyers, I don't want to bore you with all those details, but, you know, we realized that, you know, there was this say by Shakespeare, I believe, that, you know, a rose with another name has the same perfume. I don't know, you know, I don't know the exact words, but in a way, we thought that in order to make it simple for the people that work with us to avoid useless legal confrontations, we are introducing a new brand, which is going to be a sister brand to Arduino, which we're going to be using around the world. And this brand is Genuino, which in Italian means genuine, which for us, yes, OK, it's a little bit of play on word that we are the genuine Arduino. But for me, it also means mostly the genuine interest in the community we work with and we help build a genuine values and, and, and you know, that, that we put into what we do. So Genuino is going to be used for us to be able to be in all the markets where right now it will be, you know, we would incur in useless discussions. We believe that if your ideas are strong enough, you can advance those ideas even if they have a different name in a different country. Who cares? You know, we, can, we want to push through with our ideas. We can do it in a different name. So that's, I guess, the big the big thing right now. And I think for me, it was very important to make this announcement, this present this at this Maker Faire. This is the 10th anniversary of Maker Faire. Maker Faire has been so important for us. In general, Make has been incredibly important for Arduino. We wouldn't be what we are now if Make didn't really believe in us and talk to people. So we owe it a lot to, to Dale, to Sherry, all the team at Maker Media and and Maker Faire as well. You know, I ended up being part of the organization of a big Maker Faire outside of the US because I saw the value and I wanted that to happen in, in Europe. So, you know, I can only say thank you now.